Aurora Estate in Epping started around 2006 with about 8,000 homes to be built. It was a state government development and planned to be a model housing estate served well by public transport. Bus stops were promised to be no more than 400 metres from most homes. Many residents would have had a strong impression that there would be a train service. There were glossy brochures, advertising boards, maps and development plans that said so. It was a strong sales pitch. We got the bus shelters. They are here and they look great. But five years later, there are still no buses that run to many of them and there is no plan whatsoever to extend the train line. The glossy brochures stated that living in Aurora, you would have your own piece of paradise. Well, the reality is we were sold a dud. We feel completely duped by the state government failing to deliver on its transport promises. Hi, my name's Morella and um, I live out at Epping North Wallet. Transport situation out here is an absolute nightmare because it's major, major stress in our lives, especially with having two teenage children. To get to school, I can't, so I can't walk or take any transport that's none supplied, so I um, get driven by my parents. Uh, it should be, what should be a 10 minute drive, it can take up to half an hour, 45, which sitting in the car, knowing that that long drive to school isn't something that you'd like. It would absolutely not be possible to live in this estate without two cars and, and two teenagers that have, and that's the other thing we don't have, it's not just school, it's also after school activities. You can't organise family dinners, you can't, because they have, they have to rely on us to get to these, to their training, to, to their workshops, to their games. It's just a nightmare, <laughs> absolute nightmare, yeah. I work at 484 St Kilda Road and I start work at 7 o'clock in the morning and uh, basically for that I have to leave home by 5.30 and along with my daughter two year old and my husband who used because we just have one car so he used to come drop me at the station first and then come back with my daughter. My daughter's sleep was getting disturbed so uh, we used to come back, Parush used to get re ready to go to work and then wake Paisha up and then uh, he had to go drop her to the daycare and then uh, he used to park at Leilor station and then he himself used to go to work in the city. So whatever I did in the morning to drop her, she has then repeat that in the evening. So it was inconveniencing the morning and the evenings. There is bus stops, but they aren't working. There are no buses. <laughs> there are no, no buses. buses. No. no. There is a bus stop which is like five minutes uh, walk, but then it doesn't. There, there are no buses, so we have to walk 45 minutes for the closest bus stop where there are buses, but an, at an interval of an hour. And in the morning, five o'clock, there's no bus. If we have a bus stop close by, that would be an easier solution. I can just hop by, no need for disturbing them. I can just go in the bus because we can't afford another car. Well, my big concern is that people moving in uh, around the time I did 2007 basically came in under the impression that we would have public transport. I think that uh, that has turned out to prove uh, a real challenge for people living on the estate when basically we still rely on cars. This is after quite a few years and with absolutely no promise of any w adequate public transport coming up in the foreseeable future. Okay, we've got bus stops where buses don't stop. That's uh, a real pain. We've got um, a train line that's been deferred for more than 20 years when we need it right away. I just can't imagine the area developing much further without the train line. The worst part of it all is that you've got families really financially stretched paying off their homes and they're going to need one or more extra cars. And of course you've got all the other problems uh, with uh, travelling on the roads, not enough roads, uh, roads not sort of uh, equipped to deal with the, the kind of traffic uh, that they're getting when they were originally designed as country roads. And it doesn't take long before you're in congested traffic, especially in peak hour. So long, slow journeys to work and lots of time lost from family life and from other things that people might want to enjoy their lives with. But you don't have to take our word for it. 
In August 2013, the Victorian Auditor General handed down a report in State Parliament that confirmed there has been a significant underinvestment for transport in Melbourne's growth areas. Our housing estate was highlighted as a case study of where the State Government failed to deliver on its promise of early delivery of transport services. We know we were duped, but it was nice for this to be officially recognised. This is compelling evidence that urgent action is required by the State Government. Peak hour traffic problems are everywhere. A lot of people travel south in the morning to access Cooper Street and the Hume Freeway or Epping Road and High Street. And then they return in the afternoon. These roads are a disaster during peak hour and there are thousands more residents to come. It's just going to go from nightmare to disaster. And when the Melbourne Wholesale Fruit and Vegetable Market opens on Cooper Street in 2014, there's going to be hundreds of trucks along Cooper Street every day. It just doesn't make sense to mix residential traffic with freight traffic in what is going to be a massive business and employment precinct. It'll be a car park. Yes, it's simple. If you built another access point to the Hume Freeway for residents in Epping North, then the traffic will be improved massively. We've been forced into our cars because the State Government didn't build the promised train station or give us proper bus services. So if a freeway interchange was built at Ahern's Road, it would get our lives back on the move. More time out of the car and with our family. Much of the business district of Epping is north of Cooper Street. It's going to be an economic hotspot, and even the Minister for Planning has announced Epping as a Metropolitan Activity Centre. That is further evidence that Epping is recognised as a business, employment and economic hub. This economic potential is at risk if a Hearns Road is not extended. Without proper access, businesses won't come. Trucks don't want to have their access blocked by local cars and we don't want to get caught up in the massive freight traffic around the market. It is a disaster waiting to happen. It's simple. If you commit to the interchange and have some buses that stop at the bus stop, this area will have a lot less traffic. This could be such a wonderful place to live. It's a beautiful suburb with great environmental credentials, but we just don't have proper transport. The O'Hearns interchange would make such a difference. Please bring it on. The O'Hearns Road interchange will have a significant impact on the residents of Aurora and the surrounding estates because it'll give us alternate access to the, the freeway. It'll also reduce the amount of traffic that is traveling through the inner streets of Epping.